Instead of celebrating the new year with her boyfriend and their two daughters, Monique Baugh, a hard-working realtor, headed out to show a potential customer a listing. What she didn't know was that this was a fake showing and she was actually being lured to her death. This New Year's Day would be the last time anyone would see Monique Baugh alive. But why would anyone want to hurt a loving mother who was loved by many? This crime would leave two little girls without their mother, break the hearts of many in this already broken community, and lead investigators down a path of many twists and turns that would even shock law enforcement. Welcome to Viral Crimes. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for more stories. Around 5.30 p.m., a guy in a black mask barged into the house Monique shared with her boyfriend John Mitchell Momo and their two young daughters, a one-year-old and a three-year-old, and started shooting. Before the unidentified attacker fled the scene, Momo was suffering from many gunshot wounds. Thankfully, Momo was able to phone the police, and paramedics came to his aid right away. He was discovered bleeding on the floor of their bedroom with his two daughters next to him. He was able to inform law enforcement that a masked shooter had used a key to open the locked front door. According to police reports, he said the intruder fired several shots while wearing a black colored mask with just one hole for both eyes. The injured dad then took off upstairs where his one-year-old was sound asleep. I am dead already. Mitchell Momo yelled at the shooter. My babies are here. Momo was transferred to a nearby hospital for treatment of his wounds and later recovered. Both of the children were unharmed. At the scene, police found the key the shooter used to enter the house as well as many silver 45 caliber casings. The keys belonged to his girlfriend Monique Baugh. A gunshot detection system alerted police to a second shooting in a back alley on the 1300 block of Russell Avenue North about an hour after the shooting of Momo. They discovered Baugh there, who had been shot three times, once at close range in the face and twice in the body. Her hands were taped together, and she was not moving. Detectives found additional 45 caliber shell casings close to her body. Minutes before the incident, witnesses claimed to have seen an older, tan-colored Buick drive down the alley. Also in the vicinity was a U-Haul vehicle with Arizona license plates that had been observed close to where her boyfriend had been shot. Later, police discovered Baugh's black BMW at a residence in the Maple Grove area of Minneapolis. According to the police, they assumed that she was presenting the house to prospective purchasers. They discovered one pink press on fingernail inside. Detectives discovered that Baugh parked her BMW in the Maple Grove house's driveway at 3 p.m. on New Year's Eve. They discovered this while reviewing a neighbor's security camera. Soon after that, according to the detectives, a U-Haul arrived and backed into the driveway. Police were unable to clearly identify the two individuals who entered the house, seemed to remove Baugh by force, and then placed her in the truck's cargo hold. Mitchell Momo, Baugh's boyfriend, told authorities that he last saw her an hour or so before he was shot. Shortly before both shootings, Baugh, a real estate agent, got a call asking her to show a home to an unidentified individual. In addition, Mitchell Momo said that his girlfriend was perplexed as to how the caller had managed to get her mobile number. The U-Haul, which had been spotted at both shootings, was quickly linked to a company in Ramsey County by investigators. They discovered four pink press-on fingernails that matched the one recovered in the house where Baugh was most likely kidnapped, along with zip ties. According to investigators, the vehicle also had an ammonia odor. Police tracked down the rental agreement for the U-Haul van and when questioned, two guys confirmed renting the van to Cedric Barry in return for heroin. Barry was detained by police on January 2. Investigators searched Barry's 2002 Buick Regal and found 13 heroin pouches in the center console along with a mask they believed Barry was wearing when he allegedly shot Mitchell Momo. Barry was charged with luring Monique Baugh into a trap, shooting her at close range, and shooting at her boyfriend, while present in the home with two young children. On other news, murder charges filed today in the case of a young real estate agent who was kidnapped and fatally shot. And this is a story that had community activists and city leaders in Minneapolis calling for justice and an end to violence. Paul Bloom joins us now with details. So, Paul, we're learning more about that New Year's Eve murder and the suspected killer. Amy and Kelsey, the Hennepin County attorney, writing in a statement on Monday that he can't even begin to describe the viciousness of this case with this young woman and mother set up, kidnapped, and then assassinated at close range. Just days after family and friends said goodbye to Monique Bow at her funeral, prosecutors filed criminal charges against her alleged killer. Cedric Barry now facing two counts of second-degree murder and a third count of kidnapping. You didn't have to tie her up. You didn't have to 
force her to do anything. You know, you didn't even have to touch her. Monique's loved ones have said they welcome the charges against Barry, but believe more people had to be involved in the horrifying string of events that unfolded New Year's Eve day. According to the charges, the young mother and real estate agent was lured to a home showing in Maple Grove. She was then kidnapped, forcibly led into the back of a U-Haul cargo truck while another person drove. She was subsequently shot three times, including once in the face from close range, her hands bound with tape, and left for dead in this Minneapolis alley. I mean, to even think about my niece, 28, thrown in an alley like a dog, she wasn't a dog. Around that same time, a masked gunman apparently used her house key to enter her home on Humboldt Avenue North and shot her boyfriend while the couple's young children were close by. Investigators would eventually link Cedric Berry to the U-Haul that witnesses spotted all three scenes in Maple Grove, the alley, and on Humboldt. Prosecutors writing in the case file that Berry is, quote, known to law enforcement for his violent and prolific criminal history. In a stunning twist, his brother, a local community activist, spoke out about the senseless killing of an innocent woman on Friday, just hours before MPD announced the arrest. And I'm here to say that these are not black men who are doing these, these are black males. There's a difference between a male and a man. Men don't kill women and men don't kill children. And I spoke to Cedric Berry's brother again today over the weekend. He put out a social media post basically saying he stands behind his words, even though his brother was arrested today, asking for privacy for all involved. It's also worth pointing out here the Minneapolis Police Department put a hold on the booking photo of Cedric Berry, saying its release to the public could be detrimental to the ongoing investigation. Berry scheduled to make his first court appearance tomorrow. We're live in downtown Minneapolis. Paul Bloom. Fox 9. Police later identified 40-year-old Barry Davis, the brother of Cedric Barry's wife, as the other man who helped kidnap and murder Monique Ball. Charges have been upgraded for two men accused of kidnapping and killing a young real estate agent. A grand jury today decided to charge both Cedric Barry and Barry Davis with first-degree premeditated murder and kidnapping. Cedric Barry made his first court appearance on the charges today. Barry Davis is not in custody, but there is a warrant out for his arrest. Barry Davis was later apprehended by police. Police have also charged Cedric Barry's wife, Shante Barry, for aiding and abetting. They say she drove with Cedric Barry to pick up the U-Haul truck and reconnected with him after the U-Haul was returned. Investigations also led police to 28-year-old Elsa Segura, another suspect in the murder of Monique Ball. Segura, a probation officer, is accused of helping Barry Davis and Cedric Barry abduct 28-year-old Monique Ball in a rented vehicle by luring her to a house that was up for sale. On December 30th, Segura reportedly attempted to lure Baugh to the Maple Grove residence, but Baugh was with another realtor at the time. Baugh got a voicemail from a woman named Lisa on December 29th asking for a house showing from an unidentified phone number. The caller requested the showing for the next morning. Following that, Baugh got many calls from the number and thought this extremely unusual. It is reported that she told others that she didn't know how this person got her personal phone number. Segura's voice was confirmed by law enforcement officials who were closely acquainted with her, according to the police, who used the phone number to track her down. Surveillance video showed Cedric Barry purchasing the phone. Two men have been sentenced in the death of a real estate agent. This afternoon, 42-year-old Cedric Barry of Minneapolis and 42-year-old Barry Davis of Brooklyn Park both received life sentences without parole. In June, both men were found guilty of kidnapping and shooting 28-year-old Monique Bao. John Lordson shows us what Bao's family said during victim impact statements. My name is Wanda. I'm Wanda Williams Bao, W-A-N-D-A. Do I have to spell it? That's yeah. okay. We remember you from trial. <laughs> On December 30th, 2019, I said goodnight and I love you to my daughter, Monique Bell, <laughs> for the last time. <laughs> this, would only, this would also be the last time her babies would sleep next to their mother. I still say goodnight to her. And I tell her I love her. It's just to her picture. And both of her girls, they say goodnight to her too. And they kiss and hug her picture.
<laughs> and they sleep with her picture of their mommy under their pillow. And they both had to get each of their own because they would tussle over it. So the, the director of the school was kind enough to make them each their own. Monique loved being a mother. I tell her girls that often, just how much she loved being their mommy. They have to take my word for it because she's not here to tell them herself and I know she would tell them every single day. I know she would. Legends, um, Monique, Monique's oldest daughter, Legend, she likes to pray pretend. And um, we had a little, a uh, wand, a princess wand, and she turned me into a, a frog, and I had to act like a frog, and then she t turned me into her mommy, and she said, I said, I'm sorry, Legend, I can't be your mommy, and she says, give me, do it, just do it, and then I put on my best Monique impression, and I act like her mommy, I was, said what Monique, I thought Monique would say, and I picked her up, and she whispered and hugged me so tight and said, please don't leave me again. <laughs> Everyone, please check your cell phones and turn them off. <laughs> I told her, I said, your mommy wouldn't want to leave you. She didn't want to leave you. She did. <laughs> she should be here. <laughs> oh. Monique was stolen from us and murdered. It was just 22 days after Legacy turned one. We just celebrated her first birthday. <laughs> My God! <laughs> My God! <laughs> You can take a moment. Please. Legacy won't have any memory of her beautiful mother in the third the three short years that Legend have had of her doesn't go without notice that they were very short. Because Legend said to me one day, I didn't have a lot of time with her. And she's right. We all didn't have a lot of time with her, but they had the least. When a mother is so important, and everyone that has a mother understands how important a mother is, and they don't get to experience that. And they had one of the best. She, I didn't, she made me want to be a better mother. And I get the chance to do that with her children. But she should be here. And I can never replace Monique. Joan can never replace Monique, the other grandmother. <sighs> we have a lot of hard questions to answer. And a legend is already asking them. I was reading the girls their bedtime prayers book. Um, and there was a verse, Jeremiah 15, 20, that reads, um, I will rescue you and save you, says the Lord. And legend says to me, how is God going to save us if he didn't save my mommy? That's a question a child should never have to ask. And it's not a question that I should have to answer. Monique didn't have to die. She didn't, she didn't have to die. It could have let her go at some point. Those defendants could have let her go at some point. You got her key. You had access to where you are, to where Momo was. Not that I wanted him to die. I'm not saying that, but it, none of this should have happened. But Monique did not have to die. I didn't have to throw her out like she was garbage either. My baby was so precious, so precious to me. To all of us, all of us, she was so valuable. How dare they? (laughs) 
Monique had her whole life ahead of her. She was doing very well in her career as a real estate agent for Chris Lindahl. She loved creating searches for her clients, and she was excited when she found the perfect home. She was an amazing friend to many. There's a lot of them here today. She is loved and missed by many. Most of all, Monique loved her two girls. She said she was going to be a soccer mom, and she was on her way to do that. That was taken from her. I'm having an extremely difficult time trying to process what happened to my daughter. These defendants treated my daughter as if they were, as if she were less than human. My daughter came face to face with pure evil that New Year's Eve. She had to literally fight for her life. And I believe wholeheartedly that Monique died protecting her babies. She knew her babies were home and was not going to give up without a fight. My daughter didn't have a standard chance with these two soulless defendants. But they are not men. Every time I see a U-Haul, which is quite often, I can't help but visualizing Monique in the back, being tortured. And I can only imagine what was being said to her or how many times she was being called out of her name or how many times she begged for her life. Only these two defendants, Monique and God, <clears throat> truly know what happened in that U-Haul. And they made sure my daughter did not live to tell about it. What I do know is that my daughter died not knowing if her babies were okay. I know she was terrified from the beginning <laughs> to the end. I know she did all that she possibly could not to be taken. <sighs> because of the brutal attack and murder of my beautiful, my beautiful Monique. We have to rely on memories and pictures. When they killed my daughter, they made sure that we would not, that we would, that there would be no more memories made. They decided that Monique would not, would have celebrated her last parties, the birthday parties for her girls. She had her last Thanksgiving, her last Christmas. Her girls will grow up without her and be motherless. When the defendants ambushed and overpowered Monique, they used her power to take her life. And I'm asking you, Your Honor, to please use your power to make sure they spend the rest of their miserable, insignificant lives in prison. Thank you. Thank you. Next was Elsa Segura, who also faced life in prison. Today, one of the co-conspirators received a life sentence without parole. Hi, everyone. I'm Amy Hockert. And I'm Kelsey Carlson. Our Paul Bloom has followed this case from the very beginning and joins us live right now. So, Paul, today the woman who authorities say made the phone calls that lured Bao to her death learned her fate. She did indeed. Kelsey and like her two co-conspirators before her, who were already convicted and sentenced. Now Elsa Segura goes away for life behind bars without the possibility of parole. I have to live the rest of my life without my daughter. Once again, Wanda Williams Bow returned to a Hennepin County courtroom seeking justice for the torturous slang of her daughter Monique nearly two years ago. This time asking Judge Peter Cahill to send Elsa Segura to prison for the rest of her life without the possibility of parole. It was Segura who made the phone calls luring Bow, a local real estate agent, 
to a fake home showing where she would eventually be kidnapped and killed by a pair of co-conspirators. Those phone calls put my daughter right where Cedric Berry and Barry Davis wanted her. And they got her and they tortured her and they killed her and they left her. Left her babies without a mother. Segura, a former Hennepin County probation officer and 35W bridge collapse survivor, chose not to address the court. As stated in the PSI, Ms. Segura apologizes to Monique Bao's family for making the phone calls that led to this absolute tragedy. The 29-year-old's attorney has argued Segura was in an abusive relationship, a reluctant participant coerced into a scheme involving a bitter feud with Bao's boyfriend that would end with him shot and Bao dead. Judge Cahill concluding that even though Segura did not pull the trigger, the law states she is just as guilty as the others of first degree murder, warranting a life sentence. She could have been a hero. I meant that. She could have been. She could have very easily just the call that she made to set up that fake showing. She could have made a text or phone call and said, don't go. Could have saved my daughter's life. And Wanda Williams bow there went on to lament the fact that Elsa Segura truly squandered her second chance at life. As I mentioned in my report there, Segura was on the 35W bridge when it collapsed 14 years ago. Now she'll go away and spend uh, the rest of her life behind bars. In the meantime, her boyfriend at the time, as well as one other woman, still have their cases in this deadly, murderous kidnapping plot working their way the court system. Co-workers hailed Baugh as a motivated realtor and loving mother who always put her children first. Baugh's boss, Chris Lindahl, expressed his team's sorrow at Monique's passing. We are grateful for the outpouring of support from the community and are focusing on remembering what an amazing person Monique was and helping her children, said the company. Monique was a lovely individual who had kindness and sympathy. Everyone she encountered was affected by her. She was a delight to be around and incredibly motivated. Monique leaves behind two little girls, one and three. She was a devoted mother who prioritized her girls at all times. What happened to her was senseless. My condolences to her friends and family. May you find some way to heal after this unthinkable tragedy. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.